If you would like to learn all about natural language processing, this is not the right video for you. This is a video about neuro-linguistic programming. You've heard about NLP. It sounds interesting to you. You're not quite clear about what it is. You know that Tony Robbins does it and you really want to learn what is this NLP neurolinguistic thing all about. Well, that's what this video is about. I'm going to go into that. But before I do, if you find yourself liking this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you want to get these videos on a regular basis, make sure you click that subscribe button and the bell so you'll be notified when I put new videos out. And when you check that description down there under any of my videos, you'll see that there's something for free down there for you. I used to get a lot of people coming on to my channel and being upset that because they thought my videos were about natural language processing. That's why I made that joke in the beginning. And it was really strange. It's like they would get upset with me. It's like, well, I don't, I don't get it. Like, why are you upset with me? I didn't. NLP's been around since the mid '70s. I, I'm not trying to deceive anybody here. Anyway, if you've looked into NLP, chances are you've also come across the Wikipedia page about NLP. I have to answer questions about this all the time, so I feel like I, I can knock that out here and at the same time explain better what NLP is and what it is not. So if you've gone on the Wikipedia and looked up NLP, you're going to see that they call it a pseudoscience. And you have to remember that Wikipedia is not as objective as we may think that it is. Wikipedia is put together by people posting information there. And there's one particular person who has commanded that page for the longest time about NLP. And what he says about NLP is just not quite accurate, not quite correct. So, first of all, is NLP a science? No, it's not. And I've never been at a training or talked to a teacher who was trying to put it across as science. So, in that regard, I don't know how you can say it's a pseudoscience if it's not trying to be a science or trying to pretend to be a science. It's a technology. And what is the difference between technology and science? Well, you can kind of think of it as the difference between math and language. So, is language a science? Not really. I mean, you can study language and you can call that a science, but language itself is not a science, like the English language is not a science. But math is. One plus one is always going to equal two. It's, ne it's never going to be different. But if I say something like, want food, is that proper English? No, it's not. But you know what I'm saying. You know what I mean. So it's the difference between result orientation versus objective truth orientation. Science is looking for an objective truth, which is great, which is awesome. I'm, I'm, because, because of science, we have so many amazing things. I'm not in any way dissing science or knocking science. But then we have technologies. And te technologies have been around before we had the scientific method. So for example, yoga is a technology. Brazilian jiu-jitsu is a technology. It's a system of techniques. Now, do we use double blind, blind placebo uh, experimentation on these things? No, it, we, we pressure test them. We pressure test Brazilian jiu-jitsu techniques. We pressure test yoga uh, techniques. Language sort of creates its own usefulness and its own result. It either works or it doesn't, and it evolves over time. But it, there's no scientific precision. There is no objective truth or reality to a language or to the English language if, you want, if we want to be more specific. It's about a result, communication. Brazilian jiu-jitsu is a martial art. The result is to beat somebody in a fight, more specifically a ground fight. Yoga, well, many people have many different things that they use yoga for. Usually it has to do with your overall well-being. So does it work for you or not? If it does, then do it. You don't need a scientific explanation or experimentation to know that it works for you, that it, 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 that it you enjoy it. NLP is very much the same thing. It is a system of techniques. It is a system of understanding your subjective reality. So whereas science is looking for the observable truth about things, NLP is looking at, well, what is the observable experience that you have about things? And if you can understand how you're putting together your subjective experience, then that puts you in control of it. And so this is where the, the neuro part of it comes from. You are taking in all of this information from your five senses all the time, but you are not fully paying attention to all this information. It would be impossible. You would never be able to make choices and decisions. So you have a way of deleting, distorting, and generalizing information so that you can make sense of it and then you can make meaning of it. And this goes in even deeper when it becomes about ourselves, about our identity. 
we are always looking for purpose and meaning in our lives. In fact, Viktor Frankl, his entire work, the psychologist from uh, Austria who had spent several years in a, in a concentration camp during the Holocaust, his body of work was based on a theory that man needs a purpose or meaning. I don't mean man to exclude women. All of us need a sense of purpose and meaning to be well in life, to have a to be successful. So what NLP does is it takes a step back and looks at the experience. How are we constructing experience? Now experience itself is subjective. I know that might sound strange to someone who hasn't studied this before, but if you think about it, what is an experience? An experience has a beginning, a middle, and an end. But you have never had a beginning, middle, and, and an end. You can be like, well, that's not true. I know that I was born, and of course, you know that you were, but you don't remember it. You don't have an experience of it. You just know that it happened. When we think of experience, those are things that we can remember. And at a, there's a certain point where we're marked in, and there's a certain point where we marked out, beginning and the end of the experience. Now, you've never known an end, because if you're watching this video, you're obviously alive, you're not dead. So if you have no re, uh, recollection of a beginning, and you haven't experienced an, an end, how do you actually know that you're in a middle? Well, you're really not. All you've known is one stream of endless consciousness. And with an experience, what we do with an experience is we mark in, well, this is the beginning of an experience, even though it's been just one continuous stream of consciousness, and then we mark out at the end, the end of an experience, even though you don't have, you've never actually experienced an end. And then, we, therefore, we have a middle. And so where you decide to mark in the beginning of that experience and the end is one clue that we have as to your subjective projection onto to tangible information that you've experienced to make meaning of that experience. For example, you could have more or less what you would consider the same experience as someone else. You went to the same sort of event, or you went to the same event, the same time, same day, same place, same everything, same location. But you might have a sense of that event starting well before that, like maybe when you got the invitation. Whereas another person might see or think of the event starting when the actual event started. And then when it ended, for some people it might be, well, when the event actually ended or when you got home. So how does that affect the meaning that you make of that experience? Well, it will, it inevitably will. What we do basically is we take in information and we represent it internally. And how we do that determines how we feel about it. It determines how we make sense of that. So if I take experiences that I've had that were very, very negative throughout my entire life, and I organize them internally in such a way and create a map of my reality and a map of who I am in such a way that the focus is those negative experiences, I'm not gonna feel very good about myself. I'm also not going to do much. I'm not going to risk much. I'm not going to try much. If I don't feel good about myself, I'm not going to accomplish much. I'm not gonna be successful. I'm not going to be happy. However, there, if you take those experiences and you organize them in such a way that you focus on the good ones, the ones where you were successful, the ones that where you were happy and you were doing the things that you wanted to do, and that is your map of reality that you keep representing to yourself, that's gonna be a very different existence. That's gonna be a very different life. It's gonna be a much more successful, much more happy life. It's gonna be a life where you put yourself out there and you try more and you will accomplish more as a result. So you can actually, using NLP, sort of uncover these unconscious structures. It's about understanding how to get in there into your unconscious and make those conscious processes conscious again so that now we can change them. Now we can change them to fit our ideals and fit our values. So we're not we're not trying to fake it till we make it. We're not trying to impose on to reality just whatever the hell we want to believe about it. No, we're taking our own real life, real life experiences and we're reorganizing them in such a way that we focus on more of what we want to have in our lives. And then we can also use projection, but it's, it's more of what we call distortion in NLP. Distortion is when you can fantasize about something or you can make something up that hasn't happened yet. Like, I'm at the beach now in Mendocino, California, and I'm gonna get on the road after this with my son and we're gonna head, we're gonna head to Oregon. Now that hasn't happened yet, but I'm able to speak that out. I'm able to say it, I'm able to plan it. That's what we call distortion. We can imagine things that have not happened yet. So we can also do this in our internal experience. Imagine things that have not happened yet that we want to happen and organize them in such a way that we don't even have to think about it. We will make it happen. We will do it automatically. And so a lot of what NLP is, is setting you, yourself up for success automatically so that it's it's unconscious. You pull it out of, conscious, of, of unconsciousness to tweak it, to change it, to transform it, 
and you let it slip back into unconsciousness again. And then that pretty much programs you to automatically succeed, automatically align with your values, automatically do the things that fulfill you and make you happy. So ultimately what NLP is, it is the technology of how you shape your reality. It is the technology of how you make meaning of your existence. It is the technology of your relationship to life. You're experiencing the world around you and you have beliefs about the world around you. You have beliefs about other people. But if you go even deeper, what you'll discover is that you have beliefs about yourself and your beliefs about yourself, which we call self-concept, is the mother of all beliefs. It transcends space and time. It's the only truth that you've ever known, the sense of yourself that you've always had. And your beliefs about yourself is what creates your beliefs about the rest of the world. You could change your beliefs about the rest of the world, and that might not change your beliefs about yourself. For example, you might believe that the market you're in is not a very good market for your business, or the job that you're in is not a, not a good job for you. Well, then you can just change jobs. It doesn't really change much about you. But what if you believe you're a failure? What if you believe you're no good? You're worthless? Well, it doesn't matter what job you take. It doesn't matter what job you start. I mean, what, what, it doesn't matter what market you start a business in, you are doomed to fail because of what you believe about yourself, because you take yourself wherever you go. Beliefs are just structures. They're just internal structures. They're, you're, they're part of your internal mapping. They are your internal mapping. They have an organization to them. There's a way in which you create beliefs. Now, you could say, no, Damon, I know for sure, like my belief is based on real things that happened. I'm not saying it, has, it wasn't that. What I am saying is though, you can take that raw data of experience and you can restructure it so that you see it a completely different way, that you, you experience it in a completely different way. We're not reprogramming ourselves with lies. We're reprogramming ourselves with other information. If you think about it, there's so much to this territory. Like, just look around me, it's beautiful, I know. Uh, you look around, there's so much territory here. Well, how did I get here? Well, I used a map, and a map is certainly not the territory. There's so much going on in this territory that was not on my map on my phone, and that's just it. That's what makes a map useful, is I don't need all of this to know how to navigate where I wanna go. And if the map, the goal of the map was to recreate the territory, well then that would make the map useless. The idea of the map is to make it easier to navigate. So when you think about it, that's, what we, that's our internal map, the internal map of reality that we create. We do that unconsciously, we've been doing it since we were born, cultivating that map so that we can navigate this world around us. Otherwise, if we didn't have that functioning, the world would be too vast. Like we wouldn't, we wouldn't know what to do. Every morning when you get up, you'd have to make your, all of the same decisions all over again every single time. Well, because we create a map of reality, we don't have to do that. We know what we like, we know what we're doing, we know where to go. So what kind of map have you created for yourself? If you're not happy, if you're unsuccessful, or if you know that you're not achieving your potential, maybe you have some success, maybe you have some happiness, but you know there's more, you know you have more potential. What that really comes down to is likely an impoverished map, a map that has beliefs that are limited you. Well, with NLP, we can, we can understand the coding of that experience, the coding of that map, so that we can go in there and make changes so that we open up those limitations and give you more possibilities. Because if you go back into the territory and you rewrite the map, well, you go back into the territory to find the things that you were missing so that you can rewrite the map with more options, more resources, and more choices, just a richer map where you have access to everything that it is that you want. And like I said, the, the, the most powerful belief you have is yourself, your self-concept. When you understand how that works, when you understand the beliefs about yourself, and you pull those processes and structures from unconsciousness into consciousness and change them, and we do this, we test. Like, we, we change these beliefs and go, okay, well, is that giving me what I want? Hmm, maybe not quite. Maybe I'm a little bit closer but I can go back in and make some other, more changes and you just keep fine tuning this until you are the person you want to be living the life that you want to live. And this is a lifelong practice. The more fulfillment you experience, the more you fulfill your potential, the more you will recognize that there is more. And it's not about like, oh no, I, oh, there's more to do. It's like, no, this is exciting. This is fun. Like, what else is there? Uh, I'm curious about you know what my potential is. I'm curious about what what is out there in the world. Like you become very curious about what you're capable of and what is possible, rather than saying, oh, I got to go do this other thing. I've got to set this other goal. I got to do this new morning ritual. No, no, no. When you understand yourself, when you understand the structures that are creating your experience, 
and you keep changing them and fine-tuning them. It's, this, is, this is both the art and science of cultivating the life that you want to live. And this is what life, to me, is all about. Just what can we do? What can we explore? How can we fine-tune it? How can we transform it? And so much so that I, well, I enjoy this work so much so that it led me to working with other people. As I was getting better and better at NLP, I had no intentions of being an NLP teacher or a coach, but the more I did it, the more I saw the possibilities in it, the happier I became, the more fulfilled I became, the more I wanted to share this with everyone. So that's why I have created this channel and I've created over 700 videos at this point because I love this work and the possibilities, possibilities are truly endless and limitless. So if you're ready to learn more about what this is all about, or you would don't really care to learn it, and you just wanna get the results of it, so there's two things I can, I can show you. We do have a group coaching plan where you learn NLP, you learn the most powerful NLP model while you're using it on yourself and creating your own transformations. And then of course, because you will learn the model, you can use it as a coach and you can use it with other people. The other option is you can work with me one-on-one -on -one and that way you're not really worried about learning the model or using the model, you just let me take over and do the work with you and as we move you through the process of transformation. If you're interested in either one of those, if you go to the description right here down below, I would recommend taking the free assessment, get the conversation started with one of our team members. They'll answer all of your questions and walk you through it. There's also will be a link here down below if you wanna work with me one-on-one. -on -one. I do free consultations to start, just to make sure this is, uh, you understand what you're getting into and to make sure that I feel like you're the kind of client who is going to really show up and be there and transform. So if you're interested in that, check the description right here down below. Also, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel by hitting that subscribe button and the bell so you'll be notified when I put new videos out. And last but not least, if you can think of a friend or a family member who would really benefit from this watching this video, make sure you share it with them. Take care.